Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SA Accounting Academy. Uh, here's a short clip on one of our previous webinars. I hope that you really do enjoy it. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our webinar on trusts and estates. Our webinar is supplemented by a slideshow presentation and we um, will upload the seminar documents that are discussed today into your profile. Um, as you know, all the training offered by SAAA is recognized by the professional bodies and um, our CPD policy is compliant with IFAC IES 7. You can, in, you can email your questions after the uh, webinar to info at accountingacademy.co.za. We're getting a lot of good feedback um, from our webinars and some interesting questions. And what we try and do into our follow-up webinars, we bring these questions in to share the information and share the knowledge with you. About me, my name is Jakob Liebenberg. I'm a qualified chartered accountant and registered public auditor. And I've been in practice for a while. Um, I'm getting a bit old now. But uh, with, with time and experience, you gain some good knowledge. Uh, you got my contact email on the slide, uh, jako at ldsw.co.za. Okay, so basically, today's webinar, we've outlined it in terms of estates and trusts. And the approach I'm going to follow is to look at an example first and then highlight the matters that I want to draw your attention to throughout the slides. This is all about gaining knowledge and building experience. And obviously in your practice, you can apply the, this knowledge to gain more, a, a bigger client base and to generate fees. Okay, as you indicated, we've got the course material, we've got the slides, it's about a two hour session that we're gonna do. It's a heavy session. Um, there's a lot of information that we share. Um, and then we've got notes, legislation, examples that we'll share with you. Okay, so on today's webinar, what are our goals? Um, we we wanna give you an uh, overview of estate planning and trust law. Like um, I've said, I've gained this experience over many years and I've seen the progression of the, the, the trust law especially um, and the experience gained with estate law and you pick up a lot of practical examples and practical things that we try to work into our webinars. Um, the accounting for, tr we, we want you to understand the accounting for trusts and deceased estate and how to draft an estate plan and administer a, an estate. So I give you the outline to that. Um, it's a lot of paperwork when you do the work practically, um, but it's, it's not very complicated. Uh, the, the, the secret to a successful estate plan is, or estate management is a good estate plan. Um, then how to correctly create and administer a trust. Um, we can go through an example there. And in an example, I also highlight certain things um, which, you must, which I draw your attention to, which are, the, I wouldn't say the pitfalls, but there are challenges if you don't do your trust right. And then understanding your responsibilities in terms of being an executor of an estate or a trustee of a trust. So let's get into it. Estates. Okay, so every person has an estate. You, me, um, everybody will have an estate. It depends on the size of the estate, um, whether you will have to have an executor and register the estate with the master. Some estates are bigger than others, and it can be very complicated. Drafting a will is essential. If you don't have a will, there's legislation that on which it falls back, um, the law of succession, which basically indicates then, in, in absence of a will, how your assets will be distributed. So today we want to look at the basics and um, grow our knowledge from here. So we will be looking at an example of a simple last will and testament. Now, on the technical side, it's one thing to draft the will and a testament. But as you develop your professional skills going along, you will develop a way to communicate with the client. One must bear in mind that 
it's an emotional matter for a client, as it should be for any person. As accountants, we often look at the technical matters and we forget about the human side of it. So a last will and testament is exactly that, the last will of an individual. So before you start drafting a will, what I do in practice is I sit with a piece of paper and I have a discussion with the client. Then I say to the client, give me your assets. Give me a description of your assets. Tell me what you have. And then I say to the client, okay, what are your deemed assets? In other words, people often have a misconception that if you have a policy, a life policy, and that policy pays directly out to the beneficiary, that that doesn't form part of your will. That is actually a deemed asset and will form part of your will and be shown as part of the distribution um, to the individual where it got paid out. And that has an effect on your net asset value. And why that's important to remember in your planning is that you get a three and a half million exemption from estate duty. So in planning, it's important, and we'll get to the slides later, um, to consider the first three and a half million, which you can bequeath without paying estate duty. And then the other important fact to remember is that between husband and wife, any um, bequeaths do not carry estate duty at this stage. So that is an integral part of your planning. So what happens practically? There's a husband and wife, and in this simple example, you'll see the situation. So they've got a will. The first aspect of the will, and I'll get into the technicalities now, but if you look how this will is written, the, the Joe Goodspeed is saying in this will, I bequeath everything to my wife, but should my wife die within 30 days of me, the following should happen. So you, 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 you're creating a situation where the will is written to foresee certain events which may happen. All right, so if we go to the intro paragraph, I, Joe Goodspeed, identity number 410930, hereby revoke, cancel, and annul any will and testament that I've done previously. It's important. This is a statement that needs to be recorded and your will is dated. So if anybody comes with a will that date, that's dated later and it has that statement in, this will will not be relevant anymore. Firstly, wishes. A lot of people are very emotional about burial or cremation and what must happen to their ashes or their remains. So we often put the statement in, says, I wish that my body should be cremated and spread, spread on the beaches of Lotska Balkan. There shall be no funeral services. That's the, the person's wish. That's a last wish. It can be said that there should be a service held at Trinity Church or whatever um, custom is there, but that you put in. It's, it's not only about the assets and liabilities, the rands and the cents, it's the last will of an individual. Then your next paragraph goes, I bequeath my estate as follows, to my friend John Marion, all my household goods, to my son Stan Goodspeed, all my rifles, to all my staff in full-time employ, thousand rand for every year services completed. And then, I bequeath the residue of my estate to my lawful wife. So, now you've got a situation where there's specific bequeaths and then the residue goes to the wife. In terms of what I'm saying in, in estate planning, your first three and a half million is exempt and then whatever goes to the wife is exempt at this stage in terms of the legislation. So, this is the basic structure of this will, to say, keep it simple, this is my things and this is what I want done. I've got specific bequeaths and then a residue. So you must, you, you must take note of that stipulation. Um, important, and if we look at the technicalities, uh, the first um, section where we say Joe Goodspeed, hereby revoke, that's important to remember that. Um, and then if you look at your page numbering, I like to do it page one of four. So in terms of completeness, if there's ever a, a dispute about the will, that you make sure your documents are numbered so that um, there can be no dispute on it, all right? Um, what happened now here when I put the page numbering in, I lost the section where there's a place to sign for the uh, testator and the two witnesses. So that needs also to come in, but in the example I put on your profile, um, that'll be corrected, all right? Now, here's the paragraph. Should this, this said Sylvia Goodspeed and I decide, this, 
deceased at the same time, the residue of my estate or, or the estate will be distributed as follows. To John Marion, um, the following, and to the brothers Francois de Clerc and Sarl de Clerc, the following. I hope that you enjoyed that video. For more of our webinar videos, go to www.accountingacademy.co.za. Thank you and have a lovely day.